Thank you very much, uh, Chairman and Organizer, uh, for the kind introduction. You memorize all of my <laughs> career. So actually, uh, this is my uh, first attendance of this uh, meeting. Uh, but also, uh, this is a first visit in UK. <laughs> so I'm very excited in uh, this uh, place and the meeting. And uh, it's my great honor to share our works. So um, today I would like to talk about uh, our genetic alphabet expansion systems. So uh, actually this is a, a current uh, central autonomous systems. Everybody rely on these systems uh, for optimal generation. But the, uh, the problem is that AGCT is a very uh, similar uh, chemical properties. That is a big problem. Uh, oops. Uh, like it is. Uh, therefore, uh, there are many people uh, developed uh, some chemical modification of aftermath like uh, somama and uh, clicking method. But another uh, attractive method is to introduce new letters into the DNA. So this is a, a genetic alpha, alphabet expansion system. So we, if we can develop these uh, a natural base pair, uh, we call it a natural base pair uh, that can function replication. We can apply this system to the uh, SELEX method because SELEX method use a uh, PCR amplification. And uh, the most important part is uh, uh, this system can be applied to other chemical modified optimal method. Uh, this is a, so I, I'm very uh, excited if we combine this system and also existing uh, chemical modification systems for after generation for further. So uh, to this end, we have to develop uh, new unnatural base pairs that can function in replication. So uh, for more than 25 years, uh, we are str struggling to develop new unnatural base pairs by improving step-by-step. Step. Then uh, finally, we developed uh, uh, DSPA and uh, DSPX pair. And especially the DSPX pair exhibit high fidelity in replication and uh, PCR amplification. So this is the actual structure of DSPX. Uh, there is no clear hydrogen bonding interaction between pairing bases. Therefore, these are hydrophobic base pairs. And uh, DS has a psi effect. Therefore, this, uh, the shape of this uh, DS base is uh, larger than A and uh, G. Uh, instead, PX has a five-membered ring. Therefore, this is a smaller than T or a C. Uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces. So larger piece uh, well fit with a smaller uh, base. Uh, this is our concept. So then uh, there is a, uh, so another non-common pairing, each position uh, crush each other. Uh, but uh, for example, A and PX is a good shape. Therefore, we add the nitro group at this position. Uh, this oxygen uh, crushed with uh, this T electrostatically. Therefore, our DS, there is no nitrogen here. So then we uh, accomplished the high fidelity and natural base pair, the SPX. Uh, the uh, fidelity, replication fidelity for each uh, replication is uh, more than 99.9%. .9%. So by using this uh, system, we applied this to optimal generation. Uh, this is uh, my, uh, our first generation uh, optimal method, optimal generation method. Uh, at first, uh, we add the DS base uh, into the library of uh, the fifth letter. Uh, so because of, uh, DS is a very hydrophobic, uh, because uh, usually DNA is a very hydrophilic. That's why it's very difficult to interact with a hydrophobic pocket of the target protein. So then we performed uh, the selection method. Uh, I'm not sure this is a correct good, good name or not, uh, but we call it XSELEX, <laughs> uh, Genetic alphabet, uh, alphabet Expansion for SELEX. 
So then we get several raptor nodes. Uh, for example, VEGF 165, interferon gamma, and the VDA version. All the uh, KD value is a picomolar level. So, so then uh, another important thing is that uh, our stabilization method of raptor nodes. Because if, even if adding the natural base, still the optimal the stability against nucleus, uh, nucleases is not so high. So, but uh, uh, fortunately, uh, more than 30 years ago, uh, I accidentally find, uh, found specific DNA sequence, uh, just a GCG, AAGC. Uh, this forms a, a very stable uh, hairpin structure even in the seven mora urea uh, denaturing condition, this still forms uh, this uh, hairpin structure. And this uh, is also uh, stable against nucleases. Then we put this uh, mini hairpin DNA at the three prime of the optimals. So uh, this is a result. This is the interferon gamma optimal. And uh, uh, just on the optimal part, uh, after uh, one day, uh, incubating at uh, 30, uh, 37 degrees in human serums, uh, mostly decomposed. <coughs> but if we introduce uh, mini hairpin DNA at the three prime timeless, and also this uh, hairpin region uh, is not related to the binding. Uh, that's why we replaced this hairpin structure uh, with a mini hairpin. Then after that, uh, after three days, uh, still uh, survive this uh, optimals. And also uh, thermal stability is also greatly improved and the uh, KD value is also slightly reduced. So this is our method. So this is a uh, VHF uh, optimal and interfer uh, interferon gamma and uh, VWF. And another important point is uh, this mini helping uh, never interact with a target protein. Therefore, uh, especially this uh, uh, top of the A can be used for modification of aftermath, uh, such as uh, uh, fluorescent lab, uh, labeling or virtualization uh, to immobilize this aftermath. So uh, I just uh, uh, introduced uh, our method through our dengue diagnostic systems. Uh, currently, COVID-19 is spread every, everywhere. Uh, but now finishing. But still, uh, dengue infectious disease is always threatened in the world, especially uh, tropical and subtropical areas, including the, our Singapore. So um, the important thing is that uh, dengue virus is a mosquito-borne infectious disease. And uh, there are four types. We call it four serotypes. And the first infection is not so hard. The second infection with a different serotype is a big problem. So that's why the identification of the serotype is very important. Usually we use a, a dengue NS1 proteins as a biomarker. Uh, if we infected dengue virus, uh, uh, this cell pro produce uh, uh, NS1 proteins uh, to the blood. So this is a good for the biomarker uh, for the diagnostics. And uh, uh, the, each serotype uh, uh, NS1 protein, the amino acid homology is around 70%. Then we perform the optimal selection for each uh, serotype NS1 proteins. And uh, for the selection, we use a, a sublibrary system because uh, if we uh, randomize, so five letter randomized library we made, uh, in this case, the complexity is very big. It's not good because uh, our optimal selection size is a uh, so suitable uh, optimal selection scale is a 10 to the 15. Then uh, we already know only one or two DS space is sufficient to significantly improve the optimal affinity. So that's why we put two DS space with a different position in each sub-library in the uh, natural base random region, 42 random base uh, natural region. By using this system, uh, we made uh, 74 sub-libraries, then mixed all of the sub-library for the selection. 
In this case, uh, the uh, complexity reduces uh, still big, but uh, 10 to the 24th. Then we performed uh, after the selection. This is a usual method. Uh, then we performed the 10 rounds of selection. And at that time, we performed the 10 rounds of selection. But now we just do only five or six uh, rounds. Uh, after that, we improved the method. But at that time, in 10 rounds. And the most important part is uh, we use uh, sometimes sandwich method to capture the uh, aptama and the NS1 complex. Uh, the, this antibody is also developed by our previous uh, institute. Uh, this antibody binds to all of the cell type, not recognize which cell type, uh, but uh, the, to capture uh, the library NS1 proteins use this immobilized antibody, then we isolate this aptamas. Uh, this method is very good because uh, uh, if we get aptamas, we can use this system as a sandwich method like uh, ELISA. In addition, we also add the uh, serum in the selection uh, process. Uh, for example, 50% serums. And also uh, uh, some rounds we washed with a uh, three molar urea. Uh, this is very important uh, to get a uh, uh, extremely high optimal uh, isolation. So then we perform the 10 round selection. The most important part is that each uh, serotype of NS1 protein, uh, uh, total uh, PCR amplification is uh, two, more than 200 cycles. That's why uh, the unnatural base uh, need to survive uh, for large number of PCR amplification. But we get the aptamas. So uh, this is a four, uh, four aptamas bind to each serotype NS1 proteins. Uh, serotype one, uh, two, three, and four with uh, uh, sub nanomolar uh, picomolar uh, KD values. And interestingly, this is a uh, uh, serotype two. We found uh, PX. Uh, actually, th this is a fifth letter. Uh, so uh, the pairing pattern of the PS. Uh, I did, we didn't add the uh, PX base into the library, but uh, during the uh, selection uh, in a PCR step, maybe this PX uh, mutated uh, to the uh, libraries. And uh, this PX is very important. If we remove this PX, uh, replace with a T or something, we completely reduce uh, optimal affinities. So later, I will talk about six letter after the generation method. This is encourage us to make a six letter. Uh, but uh, uh, the problem is a PX base, uh, actually nucleoside, is not stable and as a basic condition. So that's why it's very difficult to chemically synthesize uh, this DNA. Uh, therefore, we uh, replaced PX with a PA. This is the previous, uh, 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 unnatural basis. Uh, the uh, replication fidelity is just a bit low uh, as compared to the PX. But uh, uh, this PX, uh, PA, uh, this, actually this is, uh, this part is aldehyde. Uh, this is very stable under the chemical synthesis. So that's why we perform the uh, uh, selection, uh, we use a PX. But uh, for chemical synthesis, we use a, a PA. Uh, even in the, this part is aldehyde, uh, still keep the high uh, affinity. So uh, this is a ELISA system using uh, our optimals. In this case, we use uh, uh, our optimal as a capture and the uh, uh, detector is uh, used for the, uh, our antibodies. So, uh, this antibody we bind to all of the cell types. And the uh, cell type one, two, three, four, each cell type uh, uh, greatly recognize each cell type. Uh, it is on proteins with a high sensitivity. But uh, when we use uh, uh, clinical samples, three patients, uh, this is a cell type one aptama. Uh, this aptama only recognize one patient, never recognize uh, another two patients. So then we check the, uh, this NSM protein sequence. Uh, this is actually a, uh, uh, one patient that recognized by our aptamas. Uh, this one is very similar with uh, uh, proteins that we use for the selection. 
but uh, uh, patient two and three, uh, so total length, uh, total amino acid is 350, but uh, among them, uh, 10 amino acid was uh, mutated. Maybe this is a uh, uh, problem. So that's why we prepared this uh, mutated proteins. Then we uh, generate another aptamas targeting this, this protein. So this aptamas. So this uh, recognize patient two and three, but never bind to uh, uh, another uh, patient. So there are two variants uh, for in the uh, cell type one. And uh, uh, amino acid homology is um, more than 98%. So that's why our optimal specificity is very high, even in the few amino acid mutation, we can generate uh, new uh, optimals. So this is actually a uh, serotype one uh, clinical samples, 2022 uh, patient in, in Singapore's patients, uh, clinical samples. Then we performed our method and clearly it shows uh, uh, variant one and the variant two. So that's why our aptamal specificity is uh, much higher than uh, the serotype, beyond the serotype. But this, sub, this is a pros and cons because a uh, virus is always mutated. I have to make an aptamas every time. It's a very difficult thing. So then we again check our li uh, enriched library. Uh, this is a serotype one enriched library. So the important thing is that we always uh, uh, find some consensus sequence like this. So that's why we categorize each families. And all of them uh, find the uh, uh, stem so complementary region. Uh, when we succeeded in optimal generation, always form uh, stem structure at the times. And the uh, inside root region is always very important. So, and uh, this one is uh, actually, uh, uh, I already told uh, the optimals that uh, uh, recognize only variant one. So another optima, this one, actually this is a much higher uh, population. Uh, this optima is like this. Then we also tested this optima uh, for the specificity. So uh, this optima bind to both of the, of the variant one and two. So that's why by depending on the selection, uh, by searching all of the optima, we can uh, find uh, any specific optimals. So uh, this is another topic for cell selects. We also perform the cell selects using, uh, in this case, we use uh, three breast cancer cell lines, MC7, uh, LB231, and T47D. Uh, this is a usual cell selects method. Then we got uh, uh, several optimals for, from each uh, target breast cancer cell lines. So, and uh, we labeled of these optimals and check the which optimal bind to which cell lines. And uh, this one is uh, 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 obtained from MCF7. Uh, this optimal bind only MCF7, uh, not bind to other uh, cancer cells and normal cells uh, that we examined. But uh, interestingly, this aptama 05 MB231 bind to all of the cancer cell lines, but not bind to the normal cell lines. We already know uh, this aptama's target is a uh, transferring receptor one, uh, because transferring receptor one uh, accumulated on, especially on uh, uh, cancer cells. And uh, also all of the aptama uh, uh, efficiently internalized within the cell. And uh, this is a, a recent uh, new data uh, by collaborating with uh, uh, hey Min, uh, Dr. Hei Min Dei uh, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, they use our optimals for 3D tissue imaging. Uh, this, this time uh, he used uh, human kidney. So, and the orange part is uh, our optimals. Uh, clearly show the imaging. Uh, but uh, don't tell me details. I'm not such a specialist of this experiment. 
uh, but uh, when you use uh, antibody instead of aftermath, uh, the antibody is always aggregated. So that uh, in case of antibody, it's difficult to get such a clear image. Maybe, uh, so aptama is a uh, hydrophobicity is very high. So that's why in the solution, uh, the aptama is well uh, diluted, uh, distributed. So that is a good point. And in our case, we just only one or two hydrophobic bases. So that's what totally is a very hydrophilic. Uh, this is a good point for the aptamas against antibodies. So now I will just be talk about uh, our new data uh, from our company. Uh, one thing is uh, uh, we always use a DS, but I'm not sure DS is the best reland for the target proteins because this is developed, uh, developed by the amplification of a third way square. So that's why I, we examine DS alternatives. So this DS, uh, there is a two part, um, like clean dike part, and also thiophen part. We uh, changed all of the part, especially this part is a change. Uh, so uh, nitrogen replaced this carbon and vice versa, and uh, thiophen changed to furan or other things. Then we made a, a lot of uh, DS alternatives. Then we replaced the uh, DS base with uh, these uh, alternatives. At first, we performed a uh, uh, gel uh, shift assays to assay feature is better. And uh, in this case, this is a VWF. And uh, if we replace with uh, uh, BS, BS is just uh, this one. <clears throat> we just remove this nitrogen of DS with a carbon. Uh, the affinity is reduced two times. And uh, finally, we found the rules. YS and the BS is the best one, but it depends on the positions. Actually, YS is just uh, remove uh, this nitrogen like this, and the BS is remove this nitrogen like this. Uh, this is a, a cell type one NS1 aptamers uh, that I introduced. And uh, this KD value is uh, several hundred picomole. But if we put uh, YS here and the BS here, the KD value is a 44 picomole, 10 times higher affinities. But interestingly, if we introduce vice versa, so instead of YS, BS, BS, instead, instead of BS, YS, in this case, greatly reduce affinity. So that's only two nitrogen removed or replaced. Completely affinity is changed. Uh, that's why our optimal affinity is, uh, is a very precise interaction with the uh, target. But I, I didn't show the, uh, I don't show the data of uh, all of the things, but not only a natural base, but also the, in the, uh, the natural base in the loop region is also mostly very important to interact with a target. So uh, this is a different gamma uh, case. Uh, this is an original uh, 2DS optimal. And if we replace DS with a YS or YO, YO is a, uh, this is a full run. And in this case, uh, also uh, reduce uh, uh, KD values, uh, increase affinity. Then we use, uh, by using these optimals, we check how our optimals is better or worse with uh, antibodies. So, um, we use uh, uh, imbutorogens, uh, uh, interferon gamma, uh, ELISA test kit. Uh, in this case, uh, the kit use two antibodies, capture antibody and the detector antibodies. We replace uh, the detector antibody with our, these optimals. Then we check the sensitivity, uh, detecting the uh, interferon gamma. Uh, this is the result. Uh, this is a uh, interferon gamma concentration, and uh, this is the intensity. And uh, blue is the uh, antibody, and red is the uh, original DS base. 
And uh, uh, this one and this one is uh, our new versions of optimizer. Uh, you can see a uh, much, much higher sensitivity is uh, also uh, signal intensity, intensity uh, or observed. It's very strange because uh, in case of our optima, we just put uh, uh, HRP, one HRP as a, a mini happy region. But uh, in case of antibody, it's very difficult to put uh, one HRP as a specific position. So that's why maybe there are multiple HRP uh, put on the antibody. Even so, uh, our optimal sensitivity is much higher. It's very interesting. And also in this kit, they use uh, uh, relatively high concentrations of uh, this detector antibody, 120 nanomolar. Then reduce uh, 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 detector antibody's concentration, greatly reduce uh, intensity. But in case of our aftermath, even in the 10 times lower concentration, still keep high sensitivity. Actually, I don't want to do this experiment that fast because uh, this is a commercially available kit already optimized, but just to replace the aftermath, greatly increased. So another problem, uh, no, no, just not problem. So <laughs> currently we perform the five letter uh, aftermath generation method, but so previously I introduced uh, uh, then serotype LS1 optimal selection. In case of serotype 2, we found uh, that PX also very important to interact with the target proteins. Then we, so this data encourages us to develop six letter DNA optimal generation method instead of five letter. At first, we determine, so this is a PX, uh, P is also okay. But we still don't know which part is important as a six letter. Then we chemically synthesized uh, this uh, PA prime diol. And also, this is just a protein group with a, a pyro. And this is just a pyro aldehyde part and a T. And also, just a, a protein with a U. Then we perform the gel shift assay. Uh, the result is this. At first, I, I expected this diol is very important to the interaction, but the result is different. Uh, may this only propenyl is much better. Uh, to, to quantify the affinity, we check the uh, uh, KD values uh, by SPL. So uh, this, uh, in this case, uh, the 67 picomolar, but original one is 100. So uh, we now found six letter. I'm not sure why a propenyl group is better or not. Uh, this is uh, like a sword and the PDS is uh, like a shield. So our abdomen has a shield sword hydrophobic groups. So then uh, we uh, developed several optimas using this six letter method. Uh, actually, uh, and this is a bit complicated because a PX is not stable for chemical synthesis. So that's why we combined uh, PA prime amidites and also PEX triphosphate for PCR and for DNA chemical synthesis. Uh, then we chemically synthesize the six letter with a PA. Then we perform the optimal selection using the uh, DSPX pair. Then finally, if we determine the sequence, we chemically synthesize with a DS and a PA. Uh, this is our method. So then we perform the optimal generation using our six letter. So I already talked about uh, a lot of our uh, interferon gamma aptamers uh, case. Uh, this aptamer is very high uh, affinity, but it has a problem because when we develop this interferon gamma aptamer, we use uh, uh, interferon gamma expressed with uh, E. coli. 
Therefore, there is no sugar modified beta from gamma. But then we tested with a sugar modification and just a E. coli expressed. And uh, sugar modification glycosylated protein was obtained from the uh, uh, HEC293 uh, uh, cells. And uh, you can see uh, this optima well bind to non sugar modified proteins, but not bind to, uh, actually bind, but reduce uh, uh, affinity, greatly reduce affinity. So then we again perform the optima selection targeting. Uh, uh, glycosidated uh, interferon gamma using our six letter method. This one. Uh, actually, we get uh, several optimums. Uh, this is just only one example. So, uh, this optima bind to both of the non glycosidated, glycosidated interferon gammas. And even if the three, uh, three molar urea page is uh, still stable, stable. So it's a, uh, affinity is very high. Uh, currently, we just uh, uh, measuring the KD values. But uh, uh, this data encouraged us, if our optima uh, recognize sugar moiety, it's a very difficult because the sugar moiety is a very diverse. Uh, we cannot get all of the optima. But maybe if uh, DS and the PX is a hydrophobic, this is not to interact with uh, sugar moiety and uh, bind to the uh, protein surface. So uh, this is our new method. Currently, uh, just uh, last, last month, we performed the uh, six rate optimal generation method. And now we get uh, these optimals, uh, interferon gamma, CLP, and the uh, thrombin, and R6 and R8. Uh, we still not optimize these optimals. So that's why maybe uh, the KD value is much, much more increased, use, uh, especially using these alternatives. So these are the alternatives uh, we already thought, uh, mostly uh, several of them pick more KD values. By using the method, we are now uh, decide to uh, le uh, left the academia position and uh, found a new company. Uh, the company is just only five people, tiny company, but uh, we provide a lot of optimals uh, uh, for all of the researchers at first because we don't know these optimal uh, abilities high or not. So that's why if you are interested in our optimals, uh, we will provide you uh, for your assistance. Uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. <laughs>